good day to you, our dear viewer. Thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster. Well, I believe uh, during the Gospel Hype moment, you took a moment to say a prayer, at least one or two issues that you did raise to appreciate God for the breath of life and as far as this day is concerned. Here to bring you the weekly news roundup, a special edition that comes your way every Sunday. My name is Sandra Kehunde. A great celebrations during the Liberation Day and of course congratulating the P7 candidates out there who did receive the results and not forgetting lots of activities that I'm here to bring you, uh, bringing you news as it is happening. My name is Sandra once again. Now straight into activities that you could have missed out. President Yoweri Museveni has revealed the possibility of utilizing Uganda People's Defense Forces to construct the new railway line. Uh, this follows the successful completion of Mandela National uh, Stadium, among other infrastructure projects in the country. Well, the president said this during the 38th Liberation Day celebrations in Jinja, where this day's message focused on education, wealth creation, health, peace, and job creation. The sound you hear in the background is accompanied by this parade march past as a sign of victory. 38 years later, it is a milestone worth celebrating. It is a victory evidenced through the capacity and smartness showed by these members of the security forces. President Museveni earlier inspected the parade mounted by these security forces whose capacity he has led in building over the years. It is this capacity that the UPDF has extended in infrastructure development. You see what they have done with Nambole? Nambole! Recently, they did the new terminal. Now, the president was Ati ababa tatena kwa abayo babayo baloza nga atibali mo Dubai ata nga bali mo Uganda wa president Museveni zena kanse kemu weno sikemu This evidence of delivery is why the force is being considered in other infrastructure projects including the new Uganda railway line We, are, we have repaired the old railway but we are going to build a new one Ya ngati ameki keme gana okugari ejo muka Ntijona giri kuiriravirizibwa era ejo egiso kweru wako eje tubona anti nije jenani nije jaboso kweru wako ata ilanga bari giri daviriza. We have been talking with the Chinese and other groups but we may, I am also thinking of using the UPDF to build it because the UPDF are able to do anything you want us to do. O, o president ya kubera ati ababaira gezi ya koku tumula na wa China ayabona ama jegano ama ingari jegari kola ama emiri mokusa the president's commitment comes at a time Busoga subregion is being considered for many road projects, including Kamuli Mburamuti Road. Been, we have been putting on companies, putting on, but it will be done. You can be sure it will be done. Then there's a road from Iganga through Luuka to, 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 to Kamli and Kaliro, I think. Yeah, Obaba Rikoba, Ateri Yorukudo Kuzo Iganga, Obite Luuka, Obite Ekariro, Obito Muikariro, Meka Iso Tukirechi Mwe Kamli, Orukudo Oro. Ena Madope Wati, Baba Tinta Kamungera Mubyanga. So I know there are other roads, but if we could do those first. This was part of the president's message as the rest of the world joined Uganda to celebrate 38 years of liberation. His day's message focused on four areas, 
education, wealth creation, health, peace and job creation. We, are, we have got like 9 million families in Uganda. Mu Uganda tuinanga families oba mayumba oba maka nge embilioni mwenda. Let's say the ones in the villages are 7 million. Singa tukobanti amaka go agali mu byalo singa gaba emilioni nga musangu. And most of them have land. Atenga bona baine eitaka. If each one employs 10 people. Singa emilioni edo omusangu edini mu byalo singa buli family oba maka singa gawe emilimo abantu nga ikumi. We shall have 70 million jobs, more than the population of Uganda. Proper land use for worthwhile ventures was emphasized by the president. That if you adopt the method of commercial agriculture on a small scale, like the model of Mr. Nyakana in, in Fort Porto, Olima, Olunda, this is where PDM comes in. Where Emioga come in. I will come back to Soga for a zone or two. We shall talk more about that. Other leaders, including ministers, agreed with the president's message. He encouraged them to participate in their respective programs that have been put in place by the government of NRM, especially the parish development model, which is our pillar program as we speak now. The people of Soga, you have listened and you have heard His Excellency's message about the sugarcane issue. If you don't have big land, please don't plant sugarcane, plant other issues. And for me, I would like that message to continue to continue. Otherwise, as children of the soil, we are so grateful. The 38th NRM Liberation Anniversary has been held under the theme building a country we all cherish henry okrut ubc ginger more state activities a president yuri kagutam Museveni has reaffirmed governments to resolve not only to bow down to external forces collaborating with a section of opposition members uh, to bring down the state by suffocating the economy and security perimeters uh, through tainting government's image. The president reveals it. At the right time, the government will expose the dirty and rude orchestrated by the opposition parties who are dancing to tunes of external forces. I'm happy that this time round, it is Ginger in particular, which is in Usoga, that has hosted this function. Indeed, they have all said it. Calling them 38 years, golden years. They are the very golden years of Uganda. Not only 38 years of NRM, but 38 years of progress. The momentum which has brought us this far, the principles which have brought us this far, let's proceed with them. But on behalf of the women, we recognize how far we have come from, especially in terms of governance, but also the affirmative action, legislation and policies for the last 38 years. And this is the situation now in the country. So it is a challenge. We shall keep fixing areas that have not been fixed well. But so far, the trajectory that we see is that Uganda is on the right track and Uganda will for sure be much better than what it was and what it is. The past 38 years have been like cooking science. Uh, the president has been very, very consistent and we started with trying to build people, we built institutions and now we are where we are saying uh, we have taken off. All this and more is what Uganda is celebrating in what is known as the Liberation Day. Celebrate this day, that's a sign that people in Ginger and Busoka and Ninja in particular, they still love NRM. It is just division is among us, the leaders that we have to work on very well this coming uh, general elections. Held in Ginger district, 
At St. Johnny's SS Wabitaka, this year's liberation anniversary has been commemorated under the theme Building a Country We All Cherish. I urge and call upon all leaders in the area and leaders in the country to move and communicate His Excellency's message to the Ugandans in the different communities to engage but also to empower them to get involved in the household incomes but also to monitor the different government programs like education because it's still talked about people charging fees yet it is a government policy for free education he talked about absence of drugs in health facilities as the bible says that at the end of the day there are those who so light for a one moses simba and his colleague confessed that most of the drones abducting ugandans are manned by opposition members Simba revealed that with the promise of having heaven on earth, but later abandoned by the opportunists, forcing him to painfully hide for close to three years, he is requesting for pardon from the president. <laughs> What these young people have demonstrated is what we have been saying all the time, that uh, the opposition in Uganda is just working on deception, deceiving Ugandans. You have heard them say people are missing, people are being tortured, when actually all that is based on falsehood. And therefore I salute these young people who have come out boldly to, to tell the truth that they are just using desperate individuals, presenting them as victims of torture when they have actually been involved in accidents. In response, President Museven noted that the worst moments for the opposition lies ahead. About the opposition, this one we know, we in the security system. And at the right time, we are going to expose these bogus groups, what they call opposition. They go talk with the Europeans, to see how to force Uganda to be a puppet of foreign interests. I mean, Ankara says, Chibwankurata, Chibwankurata, Okugobe Romu, Ntunge Mbwa, Bwegobe Rira, Mkamawayo. They don't know how strong the NRM is. Like, you know, some people announced, we are not going to give new money, new loans to Uganda. We are moving forward. Uganda will grow at even a faster rate than before. Yeah. The, the Uganda is under NRM is a totally different cup of tea. Uganda, Uganda, Yanda, we really know. We built our strength by ourselves. And we can defeat anybody who challenges us here in Uganda. For this event presided over by the head of state, Yuri Kagutam Seven, a section of Ugandans, were awarded medals for their exceptional service rendered to Uganda. Among the medalists included the late Chawazinga of Busoga, Henry Wakomulochi, who was awarded for his contribution towards the development of Busoga. I'm Robert Onyango for UBC News here in Jinja District. Relatedly on the same conversation, the celebration of the National Resistance Movement NRM Liberation Day appears to hold little significance for a section of the public in Kampala, despite marking 38 years uh, since the National Resistance Movement seized power in 1986 and being recognized as a public holiday. The public in Kampala appears to carry on with their usual activities. <laughs> Under the theme, Building a Country We Shall All Cherish, the National Resistance Movement celebrated its 38th anniversary in Jinja, marking the years since it assumed power. However, in downtown Kampala, it was business as usual, despite the day being a public holiday. 
Mutege John, a former veteran from the Royal Triangle, shared his perspective on the NRM's 38 years of service to the country. Emiaka, President Mseven Zambazembo Yinza, Kuvatu, Kumuru, and Dachinana Mokaga, Yakota de Kizakiri, Chichagwani do Kori de Gwanga, Emiaka Anga Kumi. These former war veterans are urging the president to actively involve former fighters in achieving the 10 point program that he introduced when he came to power in 1986. <laughs> So, some in videos have explained their decision to continue with normal businesses on this significant day. Singo bonye tebaru mani, tebani mani, tebaru mani ro anso ngati embera je bayita mo orusi si ya mulembe, kumutu wa ingere chibu gata ba na cha kulia, tawe ra na cha kunywa. It's a public holiday. Yes, we banga it's a public holiday. Nandi wa dendi waka. Church in church in this there is poverty. Poverty. Liberation Day is observed every January 26th, and on this day, Ugandans often take time to reflect on the significance of the event and the progress made since then. Justin Nakami, UBC News. Now away from the liberation updates, a family and friends a Friday gathered in Alito, Kola district to pay their last respects to fallen Dokolo woman MP Cecilia Babara Atim Ogwal, who passed away in India last Thursday. The Iron Lady was accorded a seven gun salute in honor of her contributions to the country. Saturday afternoon, hundreds of people from far and wide came to Aleto in Kole district to pay tribute to the late Cecilia Barbara Timogwal, who succumbed to cancer in India last Thursday. At 10 a.m., Paul Bearers from Uganda Police Force led the body out for prayer and eulogy. <laughs> Vice President Jessica Lupo represented the president at the funeral. Death has robbed the family of a pillar and indeed the entire nation of a very hardworking citizen, politician and diplomat. The late Honorable Cecilia Ogwal will be remembered for her great contribution towards national development. She was an advocate for women and the girl child. Through her determination and discipline, she managed to challenge traditional injustices and prejudices against women. She will be remembered as an icon of women empowerment and emancipation. I'm Judy Sadie. Deputy speakers of both Kenya and Uganda commended the contribution of Cecilia Ogwal here in Uganda and Africa as a whole. Now, I know most of you, members of parliament, are going to do so demand when you die. I want to stay married. I can't stand it on merit. She earned it on merit. She worked for it over your streets. You can disagree with your government, but never disagree with your country. For me, as a woman leader, I, am, I salute you. Your Excellency, I are grateful and you have not only done this for Uganda, for the people of Dokolo, you have also done it for the women leaders of Africa. Cecilia Barbara Tim was married to Lamex Ogwal and were blessed with the seven children. The first two children at any 
secondary and primary school are all paid fees for. Whenever I asked, when I asked her how much money she has, she said God will give. Speaker after speaker leaders urge government to fast track the construction of a Kibwa stadium in honor of the late as one of the projects she advocated. I would request government that resources be allocated alongside all other stadiums being constructed. So I would like to assure the people of Ulamo that government will construct a Kibwa stadium. <laughs> The late Cecilia Barbara Timogwal served as a legislator for 28 years and at the time of her death she was representing Dokolo district under the FDC ticket. Atal, we will always remember you for being a Pan-African. And let no mistake about this, we will continue talking about what she was there. But you see that village is what the Honorable Cecilia Ogwal long for. And we can be united as a country. And we can, regardless of our political shades and parties and colors and all these different things, and we can work together for the betterment of our country. My hope and plea is that in memory of Imad Cecilia Ogwal, we shall do that. Cecilia's body left the ground for her final resting place. And at 5 p.m., the body was lowered into the grave. As soon as the casket was lowered, a seven gun salute crowned our last journey here on Hearth. Ed Yolwa, UBC News. May her soul continue to rest in eternal peace. Moving on, Vice President Jessica Alupo, together with the medical experts, ophthalmologists from Pakistan, have offered free surgical operations to over 300 patients found with cataracts in Kataku district. The camp, which started Friday at Kataku General Hospital, will run for three days and will also offer free glaucoma screening and treatment of all eye conditions. The Vice President, also District Woman Member of Parliament, Katakui, commanded the medical experts under the umbrella organization overseas Pakistanis Global Africa for coming to the aid of our vulnerable people. Uganda's Health Ministry links eye problems to growing recklessness among Ugandans when it comes to eye care. Statistics reveal that 2.5 million Ugandans have both moderate and severe eye-related impairments and approximately 150,000 persons accounting for 0.4% are completely blind. Which is about, uh, about 150 kilometers from here. We were celebrating a ceremony and then her father came with her in the ceremony. Then her father brought her to me after the ceremony. She, he said that this child is blind. I would like you to help me and get a solution to her problem. And then I asked the, the RDC, since we had already got information that you would be here today, I asked the RDC to ensure that she travels. A clear demonstration that we have a big problem in the region. And I want to thank you for choosing to come and invest in Uganda on issues of especially the eyes. From the time I grew up, the people here used to travel to Tororo. Tororo is about 200 or 250 kilometers from here. I think 200 or 300 even from here because of ice. So that means that mo most people had given up. When they get the problem of ice, they say, how do I reach Tororo? How much is that? And what happens there? It is easier here because you can even first come and ask the doctor in, in a local language. But now Tororo, they even say, what language is spoken there? Especially those who may not have got a chance to travel beyond that. But we are very privileged that instead of going to Tororo and Mengo, those are the two main places, Mengo, Hospital, and Tororo. So instead of going there, the people have traveled from Pakistan thousands of kilometers away to come to us.
home here. Let's clap for the, our, our, our visitors. And because of um, your response last time, they even got uh, persuaded to establish a fully fledged hospital in Uganda because that was a check. But I finally want to thank you very sincerely once again for remembering to come to us. And also I got an invitation to open the hospital Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, has handed over 50 Congolese ADF abductees to the Democratic Republic of the Congo authorities. The handover function was witnessed by Operation Treasure Commander Major General Dikolum at the Joint Operation Treasure Base in Kasindi, the DRC. Take a look in this detailed report. Uganda People's Defense Forces, together with Congolese Armed Forces, continue to register success in eliminating the ADF rebels from the Eastern DRC. This was communicated by Major General Dick Olum, the commander, during the handover ceremony of 50 ADF adductees that were rescued from the hands of the ADF rebels in the DRC. We, as the UPDF, we are taking over. I really don't want to call it handing over. We are rehabilitating and sending back to their homes 50 Congolese, both children and women and men. As the Congolese also are giving back to us the four Ugandans whom they have rehabilitated there through the same bridgeway are now being handed over to us. And this is not something that is stopping today. It's going to be continuous because the operation against the ADF is continuous. He says that the major bases of the ADF in eastern DRC have been destroyed. The ADF in Mwalika and now the ADF has shifted to Ituri region in those areas of Butane, the, we, where it actually it has been their hideout, Butane, Monge, Israel, and those areas of Chani Chani in the, in the north Kivu, in those areas of Mangina, Biakato, towards the, the west of uh, Beni, I mean the west of Butembo. We still think it is a new phase that we have begun, which is in sector 4. We are still going to do the same. Kano Okoko Bokoyeni from FADAC noted that the joint operation will continue so long as there is cooperation and the need to flush out the ADF rebels from the jungles of eastern DRC. Paske tumayakamata ndani ya shamba ya vita. Na wanawake wawili, wenye wali wachugua nao. Walikuwa na juwe maole mingi ya kuwapelekea swate wale wa wanaume machakula maprodi farmacetiki. Ndo tumayeta wane kwa siku ya leo. He also handed over four Ugandans that were rescued by the Congolese army during the fighting. When you are in Uganda, at the river on the bridgeway, na si shipia, kundele tu na kazi tu na fanya, tu na leta Uganda ine, ndani ya Uganda ine, kuko wa wale wa kuwa kumbata, setadi wa kuwa wa vrea def, na bite surtu ya ni ni mani kwa na apo. The abductees thank the Ugandan government through the UPDF for the love they have shown them since they were set free from the enemy. Kwa niaba asisi wote wa Kongole, kwa niaba asisi wote wa Ganda, tunashukuru mungu awalipe kila laeri. Muzidi kuendelea na kazi. These were supported with assorted items to help them reunite with their families. Kutoka kwa bridgeway, kuenda nyumbani, na kila kitu ya kondano, ikusaidie. The Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda, Right Honorable Nabanda Robina, has cautioned headmasters and government-aided schools that they will be held responsible if ghost teachers are discovered in their schools. Nabanda made the remarks while marking, making a presentation to 413 headmasters from Greater Western Uganda who are undergoing patriotism and ideological training at the National Leadership Training Institute, Nali, in Changkwanze.
Nabanja says that the government has been stuck with ghost teachers on payroll, yet the actual teacher numbers are low. The Premier says that the government could not recruit teachers in those schools because they were being portrayed as fully staffed, yet those present were few. And some of them are getting fired salaries. <laughs> We cannot recruit our men and you teachers know that that teacher died in 1990, but he still failed. All your payroll, and you cannot report that. Sometimes I'm going to share. You sit down and share your money with the inspectors. Because if you are a teacher of a primary school, your payroll is full. You call it staff ceiling. The staff ceiling is a fool. In actual sense, those who are on the ground, they are saying you have 14 teachers. On the ground, you have only four. Isn't that so? On the ground, you have only four. But you check this thing on Monday, or even day. And they actually, you know, these teachers are not there. And you are keeping quiet. You are a criminal. We shall not allow this. I am telling you, you are a criminal and you become a face it. Nabanja warned all headmasters in government-aided schools against establishing boarding sections at schools without the authorization of the Ministry of Education and Sports because they are a source of danger, especially school fires. Some of our children have lost their lives as a prime minister of this country. This must stop. Our children should come from home, come to school, and go back. Nabanja appealed to teachers to be patriotic and focused if they are to transform the education sector in the country. Bring big and remember that education must be a vehicle for building a modern, democratic, and socially transformative society if we are to remain competitive in the global world. The director Nali, Brigadier General Charles Chisimbo, says that the training is aimed at equipping the headmasters with skills to improve on services offered in schools. We are grateful to you, great Honorable Prime Minister, that whenever you are called upon to come to Nali, you are always available. Asante <laughs> sana! Helen Seku, the Commissioner, National Before Secretary of Patriotism Corps, Uganda, says that this is the last training of head teachers for regions for the first phase. State House has been conducting patriotism and ideological training for all head teachers in government aided schools and selected private schools at regional level. UBC Weekly News Roundup. Farmers in MPG District have adopted an indigenous method of using organic matter to prevent African swine fever, ASF, and other diseases from affecting their pigs. The farmers use locally available materials, such as banana leaves, coffee husks, and cow dung to create a protective layer around their pigsters. This layer acts as a natural repellent for ticks and other pests, and also provides insulation and hygiene for the pigs. African swine fever is a highly contagious virus disease that causes high mortality rates in domestic pigs in sub-Saharan Africa. It is transmitted either by ticks or contact with infected pigs. In Uganda, farmers in Piji district have discovered a solution to the deadly fever through innovation of indigenous method of using organic matter. You dig uh, a hole, uh, like three, three, three feet down, then you construct uh, your bleaks, like the way you see. You put in, uh, now, the, the, the waste from the pigs are mixed up with these uh, uh, trees, the, 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 the so-called, we, we call it uh, tree cuttings. So when you put them there, they mix up with uh, the, the wastes of the pig. 
They say it has helped them reduce the risk of the virus and improve their pig production. Now, the beauty with the IMO, the, as I told you, human interaction is limited because uh, normally these pigs are affected by a lot of diseases, especially swine flu. Now, if we human beings, we normally consume pork. And then when you enter here, you, uh, like now a worker who is working here, might go and eat pork. So the interaction between the human being and this, these animals are limited because as he's serving them, he's just standing here to put food, water is there, and then at the end of the day, you don't get in touch with these animals. It has also helped them reduce on the costs of fertilizers since they are getting free manure from indigenous method of using organic matter for their plantations. It is now feeding. Uh, you see, we, we get uh, manure from here and then we take them to, to our gardens. So this is another way of how we can uh, complement on the plants we have in the, in, the, in the homes. This first batch of the farmers was killed in the field farmer schools and supported by the Korea International Cooperation Agency through the National Farmers Leadership Center. So we decided to identify farmer groups around Muyira. Muyira is a parish that surrounds the NFLC. And basically, we are training them uh, using the farmer field school approach. And when we talk of uh, the farmer field school approach, it is just an approach whereby people are trained on site. We identify uh, technical people. These farmers are put in groups, and then these technical people go and visit them. And when they visit them in their groups, they are in position to share the challenges. And when the challenges are brought forward, for example, if it is animal disease or crop disease, they are taken through on how it can be mitigated, on how it can be controlled if it has gotten into, uh, into the field. The second batch of farmers is expected to benefit from the same project to boost their daily incomes. We are expecting to benefit uh, to get knowledge about crops and farm, farming, like in livestock and the plants. Mariana Wari and Joseph Oko for UBC. Ugandan lawmakers let May 2023 pass the Traffic and Road Safety Bill 2018, banning the importation of motor vehicles above 15 years of age or more in a bid to reduce road accidents and carbon emissions. With vehicles being the biggest polluters, Uganda suffers with high air pollution levels from carbon emissions that now stand at three times past the recommended limit by World Health Organization. A study carried out by Uganda National Institute of Public Health on pollution levels in selected areas in and around Kampala provided that all sites recorded an average daily value of more than twice the World Health Organization cutoff. Sites with less human activity tended to have lower average levels of pollution as compared to city centers. In an interview with Dr. Barirega Akankwasa, the executive director of NEMA, he says there is need for promotion of green environment in the urban areas that are prone to pollution. Current status of our air quality is bad. It is three times bad than the recommended WHO levels. Three times bad, not double, three times. So we must address the issue of air pollution. We are coming up with regulations for air pollution. The draft is already in place, which will dictate the type of engines we should have or the age of engines we should have. But also, we can mitigate the problem through, for example, greening our cities. I have seen, you know, very important people in this country advocating for the gazettement of central forest reserves in the cities and shift them elsewhere. That is really thinking in the opposite. It is in the cities where you have more emissions. It is in the cities where you have more dust. So it is in the cities where you need more trees. 
Uganda Revenue Authority has put in place stringent measures right across the East African region to ensure that old cars don't make their way into Uganda. We use a common law, which is East African Community Customs Management Act, and this one empowers us across uh, East African region to ensure that we have control as far as Mombasa and Dar es Salaam, so we know which vehicle arrives and we know which vehicle has reached the, the, the port. So before it even comes into the country, we are aware who is importing what and what type of a vehicle. So we have that control in place. Secondly, we have anti-smuggling. If anyone wants to smuggle maybe from another country, we have checks and balances to ensure that all the cars are not allowed. In order to curb the pollution challenge brought about by imported old cars, Uganda Revenue Authority cleared all hybrid cars of import duty to 0%. An environmental levy of 50% is to be put on all small cars being imported into Uganda beyond eight years from the manufacture date. As URA, 15 years, we have the small cars don't come, but trucks and other good carrying vehicles are allowed if they are not restricted. There was increased levy on old cars, and the other, the, the, the other one was to ensure that uh, electric, electric cars and cars that are hybrid, uh, hybrid oil, they removed the, 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 the import duty, is at zero, zero rated, so that is why that's another good incentive for the people who bring their regular new cars. Um, we are putting environmental levy of 50% on all small vehicles that are imported beyond eight years, eight years and, and above. 20% environmental levy on goods carrying vehicles, that is the trucks and, and other vehicles that come. A section of car dealers say that the 50% environmental levy is high and will keep most of their sales lower. This, this, this 50% Environmental levy has also uh, brought about unemployment in the car importation in the car importation sector in a way that uh, so many dealers have been kicked out of business. So many dealers been so many dealers have been kicked out of business. Uh, the fact that they can no longer manage to raise enough capital to import in enough cars for the people who buy locally. And remember, there are so many people who also benefit from these people who are in this business, like people, people, people selling foodstuffs, eh, spare parts and other things. Because you see, when you are looking at the breakdown of the tax, they can be environmental levy, they can be other uh, levies, uh, import duty and all that. We can look for ways of uh, reducing uh, those uh, levies and uh, because remember there's also a charge of the tax of, of the cost of the car from Japan to Mombasa, which is already a bit high. Okay? And those are cars which are twenty sixteen and above. So if a customer or a person has managed to ship in a car which is twenty sixteen and above and has complied with the standard still, let the taxes be reduced because we are still seeing high charges in taxes of twenty sixteen cars. So we request the government if a customer has complied and bought a car which is in the year range, okay, like for instance twenty sixteen and above, and it is uh Maybe not a hybrid, okay? It's a normal consumer, but it, it, it doesn't fall in the environmental level bracket. Let the other charges, the input duty, also be reduced. It should also be noted that oxides emitted from gasoline and diesel engines contain nitrogen oxide that have harmful direct effects on human health and cause lung irritation, thus weakening the body's defenses against respiratory infection such as pneumonia and influenza. Mariana Wari for UBC. In other activities, a cross section of 99 vulnerable children are now having hope for a brighter future as they graduate with vocational skills in different occupations from the slum communities in March in the division of Kampala. These children are part of the many destitute children whose parents and guardians were ravaged by the deadly HIV AIDS pandemic, which has claimed millions of the world population for over 30 years now. It is now 23 years since Meeting Point Kampala Chamusobongo, a local NGO, started mobilizing and counseling HIV and AIDS victims and the affected from the slum communities of Namwongo, 
Kanyogoga, Chisugu and Chibuli in Kampala and in Wakiso district. According to the convener of meeting point Kampala Chamuso Wongo, Ms. Nowelina Namukisa, the dream of addressing the adverse impacts of HIV and AIDS has been achieved. It was started to support the people living with HIV and AIDS by then. And there was no drugs. There was uh, no ARVs as you can see here right now. We were just accompanying these people to die peacefully. No word in Anamukisa recalls that HIV and AIDS had devastated the community and most youths were hopeless and jobless prompted her to start a vocational skills center. Our call, the training, is to produce young adults that are self-reliant and capable of making adequate living and also contributing to Uganda labor market. Our objective is to prepare youth to work productively in small and medium-sized enterprises. Mark India East Member of Parliament Derek Nyeko, also a brain child of Meeting Point, says the NGO played a pivotal role in addressing pertinent issues faced by the slum communities of Mark India at the peak of HIV and AIDS scourge in the country. I'm a testimony for what a meeting point has offered to the communities. Well, as we grew up, many people thought that those people that have AIDS have totally knocked a dead end. But meeting point gave so many people hope. It provided food, it provided counseling, it provided education to so many young people. I witnessed so many families that have benefited from Meeting Point. It gave them food in times whereby people thought that uh, having HIV, uh, you're supposed to be... Leading the assessment, certification and handing over work tools to the graduates, the principal qualifications officer at the Directorate of Industrial Training, Johnson Tuliamwe Simire, applauded the trainees for the competencies acquired. Most of the graduates and graduates that have been through meeting point, majority are employed by themselves, others are working within Uganda, and others are working abroad. Since inception, the Vocational Training Center at Meeting Point has so far awarded certificates to over 3,000 individuals in tailoring, shoemaking, soap making, welding, and metal fabrication and tie and dye. Mvude wano, ngeenda kola chena somelela, basho na nzai nengi, nitunga vuli chikacha alugoyi. Okusingi la dala mama, mama noweli na, kuwa, sengate ya liye, sani sabo de kumala koko sene, jenso mini. Nenyu mili za meeting point, ntibampa ama gezi, gezi genda kuwela bida mpaka kufa. This index graduates, are hopeful for a brighter future now that they have attained life skills. I'm Navka Farida and Douglas Setumba. Fred! Osmosis. Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo. The general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source Osmosis. of the Nile. I don't have money today. Mm. Just a capital loan of 200 you get to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hustle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The energy of this land comes to life in dreams and memories. It lights up in these nights and leads us towards new horizons. It was born in the hearts of these men, of these women. The energy of this land comes from here. It comes from Africa, and it vibrates in each of us. I'm powered by Africa. Oryx, service stations, powered by Africa. Katono. 
Kasimonye kuzunga na banka silipsi. Ah ah. Kati osumuro kusasula school fees zo mwana wo. Atena okola na ebila lantoko. Kusimuye yomu ngalo. Ichukula changu nyo. Nigao nyizi sita. Emumu kaga tanu. Sita. Munana not hash. Ukumelele vikula giritua. Ubuku zise apu ya MTN momo. Hati kati okula churu aliru. MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited. Erunga nisipa banka nkuruwe ya Uganda. Welcome once again. With the increasing prices of fuel across the country, our motor vehicle innovators are revising ways of crossing to hybrid automotives. CFA All Motors has introduced the only Toyota Corolla cross hybrid electric, marking a transformative uh, for Uganda's automotive landscape. The self charging hybrid electric vehicle seamlessly uh, blends with the country's increasing focus on eco friendly driving. One of the things we notice in terms of shifts, consumer shifts, is more towards compact vehicles as opposed to the larger vehicles that we, uh, that we know of. Yeah. For obvious reasons, our cities are getting more congested. Uh, who are our parking people? Uh, Multiple. Multiple. Nabo, eh? <laughs> you may easily pay for two parking spots. <laughs> Those are also challenges. But um, your compact vehicles play in the space in terms of uh, ease of movement, uh, utility of, of consumption, even before the hybrid technology okay, that was added to it. Because I'm sure you were part of the previous launch of the cross, but then on adding the hybrid, of course, we then brought in the second layer of efficiency. But some of the things that I need to allude to and, and really over and above the efficiency, which is the key selling point. So literally reducing your uh, your, your, your town driving is actually its most efficient uh, use of fuel because you're, you're, you're in the frequent braking and that is actually energy that we discovered that could be used to, uh, to, to charge up. Then of course when you're on the highway it's more of the fuel that kicks in yeah. uh, but things like hill going up a hill that's where then your electric motor boosts in for, uh, for things like torque. But um, speaking to it, other than the fuel efficiency, the safety aspect is one of the top range that we're proud of. A lot of focus for us is in terms of the uh, fuel efficient and compact range of vehicles. Uh, but the next steps for us is transferring the same hybrid tech into some of the popular models that you, you've been knowing uh, from us. So in the next couple of months or so, uh, we'll then be adding the RAV4, which has been a very popular vehicle, into the hybrid portfolio as well. And then eventually down the road, possibly then uh, into the Hilux range as well. That's a conversation that's ongoing. So we'll be adding more of the uh, Toyota portfolio into the hybrid range that you should be expecting. Batman wins a customized gym bag. Is that a gym bag? Wow. Straight into sports, National Council of Sports General Secretary Dr. Bennett Patrick Oguel has highlighted areas in the sports sector that will endeavor to achieve this year. Coming off a relatively successful 2023, sports in Uganda is destined for bigger challenges this year, highlighted by the Paris Olympic Games due in July and the Paralympics in September. We have been improving year in, year out. Various federations ranking have improved year in, year out. Opportunities are widening and broadening for various distinguished athletes to come to the international stage because we are supporting also lined up this year are the East African Games next month in Rwanda and the African Games in Ghana in March. To ably secure Uganda's participation at these games, government is looking to spend in the excess of 10 billion Uganda shillings. So by the time we are saying this year is an Olympic year, we have taken three years to prepare the athletes to reach this stage. So we can't frustrate them at this level. Neither the coaches who have walked the journey with them. 
the resources of government you have already invested should be utilized up to the last point. So that is the reason why we must be consistent. The call now is for expedited release of available funds to cater for the pathway notable to the qualification for the Olympics, at which only 18 athletes have earned places. So where there are gaps like now, we have gaps in the resource envelope. We make an appeal for the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to release all the funds that have been planned. Anything sort of that definitely will fail to present our threats. Those qualified so far as 16 from athletics, rower Kathleen Noble and a cyclist that is yet to be named by the association. I think I can be very frank to you. Our main hope still in the Olympics is the athletics. First look at the seniority of the athletes we have. The Joshua Shiftegay, the Kiprimos, they have reached a level that now you will you know that once they are in the good books, once they are in the good health, there's something coming out of their, their participation. But uh, we also believe that the other disciplines have good capacity. The rower, Catherine, at that time, she, she, she finished, I think, eighth, something in the race. But uh, she has been training year in, year out since the last Olympics. And she has participated in most of the qualifier events. So we have a lot of hope that this time she may win a medal. The number is expected to grow with boxing, swimming and rugby still engaged in several qualifiers. So our target, we had planned for 30 in total. So we still have the window for qualification between now up to June. So we are looking at African Games, which is one of the qualifier events. Oh, we look at swimming, one, one of the, the university arrangements. Uganda as a sports administrators will this year also focus on the Pamoja bid that one Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania have con hosting rights. Looking at major games for additional resource of up to six billion. We are looking at procurement of sports equipment and supporting talent education programs in the district local governments, additional three point nine and uh, and the AFCON. AFCON budget is so huge on its own. The construction of the stadium in Oema, we're estimating 100 million US dollars. We are looking at the fees requirement uh, deposit by CAF, which is about 30 million US dollars. That's around 140 billion Uganda shillings. We're also looking at construction of 11 training grounds in Oima and Kampala here, which takes us about 111 billion Uganda shillings. We are looking at NADO, National Anti Doping Agency, which by law we are supposed to establish with a budget of around 30 billion. National Council of Sports believes that for sports to serve the nation better, Budgetary estimates in the excess of a trillion shillings are a must in the next financial year. It's always an honor to be here to serve you and from the entire team behind the scene. Wish you a beautiful Sunday afternoon, a fruitful, fruitful week ahead. Keep watching the National Broadcaster. Lots of interesting programs lined up your way. My name is Sandra Kahunde. UBC, inspiring Uganda. Thank you. Hello, Eric. Come on, see my new home. Are you looking for the best quality paint for your dream home? Be part of the new revolution with our Global Paint Silk Vinyl that gives you beautiful, shining interior walls as weather coat gives you never fading and strongly guarded walls against bad weather conditions. Located along Namav Industrial Park, Global Paints, a reliable product. No, 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 no,